Hello, everyone. This beautiful bouquet is our plant of the week, and it is definitely grabbing our attention with its fiery blooms. Celosia is our plant. Hi, I'm Allison from The Well Cultivated Life. Thank you for joining me here for Flower Power this week, where I like to share all kinds of tips and interesting facts about different plants that grow around us and some that we grow ourselves that we choose to grow in our own gardens and yards. So this plant, Celosia, is in the amaranth family, also known as the pigweed family. And it has like a bunch of different names. It's uh, Celosia plumosa, coxcomb, fairy fountain, feather Celosia, feathered amaranth, Lago spinach, although I've seen a different plant be called Lago spinach, so I'm not sure. Um, plumed coxcomb, Prince of Wales feather, quail grass, red fox, red spinach, silver coxcomb, and wool flower. Not sure. I, maybe this looks kind of woolly. I don't know. But all of those different names are for this one kind of family of plants. And they make a wonderful cut flower. They're relatively easy to grow in the Northern Hemisphere or like where I live, unless you lived in Florida, it's probably going to be an annual. It does produce a lot of seed. And as you can see, it's beautiful in a bouquet, especially if you mix it with some other types of, you know, like more round kind of flowers. But I wanted to give you the full effect today. And one of the things that I uh, read about was that, you know, it likes rich soil and it likes a nice, warm, sunny spot, which is true for most annuals. And that sometimes the really tall varieties, the stems can break off on them if the tops get heavy and they kind of weigh over. But I haven't seen that at all. This particular variety is incredibly strong. It's got these huge, thick, thick stems on it and these beautiful blooms that really look kind of like a flame and that fiery flame is kind of our theme not kind of it is our theme it is our theme for today as we're talking about celosio now i uh you can also uh make cut and hang and dry this for a nice dried winter flower for decorating a wreath or just having it on display as a as a uh, an everlasting flower as well and I grew these from seed. You, there's not a whole lot of varieties that you can get. Usually you just get the really short ones in the garden center. And I grew these from seed. And I got them from one of my favorite seed places. Shout out to True Love Seeds, which is a small seed company. I think they're in the New York or New Jersey area. And they're trying to sort of preserve a lot of these traditional African plants and keep them growing and they use a lot of small seed growers. So they're awesome. And I got this from them partly because one of the things that Celosia has, because it's in the amaranth family, it's um, it's edible and it has these. So when I, the leaves are edible. And when I went to put this in the bouquet, I plucked off the bottom leaves and I can take that upstairs and just cook it up like spinach or put it in some other kind of dish. They're a little tough, so mostly you want to do it in like a super stew or something where you're really cooking it pretty well. But the seed itself is incredibly small and can be kind of difficult to work with if you're starting your own. So I found this awesome tip from threeacrefarm.net. And what she says is to pour the seed into a container and then you wet at the end of a toothpick and you just kind of dab it in there and it'll just, because it's wet, it'll just pick up a couple of seeds, and then you just kind of dab those into your little starter packs. And I thought, that's ingenious, and I am definitely going to use that next year when I start this. And there's a lot of other small seeds. Poppy seeds, you could probably use that for as well, because these are smaller than poppy seeds, okay? Um, so like I said, they like hot weather, and they won't do well if it, you have a, um, a pretty wet summer. And that's because they're originally from uh, India, Nepal, especially the one that we use for uh, the medicinal use. Let me show you the some pictures of those. This is this uh, plumosa, which is the kind that I have here. And then this is the one that is normally called the 
coxcomb because if you've ever seen any kind of chicken and you look down on it from on the top down this does resemble a coxcomb for sure and then celosia argentia is the variety that is most commonly used medicinally and is the original one from Nepal in those areas. Now, there are a lot of different types of amaranths that grow in Africa. And there it is grown, as, like I said, as a food crop and harvested. It's an important food crop. It's grown like a grain. And then you can also eat the leaves and you can press an oil out of the seeds as well. So the, uh, like I said, Celosia argentia is the medicinal version of this. And the flower and seed are both astringent and hemostatic, which means it helps to stop the flow of blood and other fluids. And that's exactly what it does. It actually is useful for treating some kind of a not so pretty fluids that <laughs> come out of us, such as, um, you know, bloody stools and bleeding hemorrhoids and vaginal discharge and leucorrhea and diarrhea and things like that. And but let's face it, if you have these conditions, you definitely are looking for some help, aren't you? Now, it also has antibacterial properties as well as anti parasite properties. And is this official word parasiticide? I practice saying it a bunch of times, but I'm just going to say anti parasite. You don't mind, do you? Okay, so according to one source, it's very effective against, against this parasite called Trichomonas. Now, where I live, we don't really have a lot of parasites. And so I haven't had to, I don't know that much about them. So I looked it up and found out that it's a sexually transmitted disease. And guess what it does? It gives you a bloody stool, a vaginal discharge, like all the whole list of things that this plant is treated for. So luckily for people who are exposed to this parasite, hopefully they have Celosia growing close by because it's very effective. It also has an affinity for the eyes. It can help with all different kinds of eye conditions, bloodshot eyes, and also blurring of vision, possibly cataracts. And uh, But there are some other types of indications that say, depending on your condition, you wouldn't want to use it. So the leaves themselves can be used on all kinds of skin eruptions, bruises, boils, and even can be made into a poultice for, um, for broken bones as well. So once again, we have a beautiful flower that turns out it has a lot more to offer than just its good looks, right? I love plants. So the flower essence, um, again, we're returning to this sort of idea of the, um, of the fire, our, our fire inside of us is found sort of in our lower chakras. And so the celosia plant, the flower essence, is good for the lower chakra areas and helping us to keep our flame burning, uh, which this fire element relates to things like passion and relationships and joy. So if you are a person in need of uh, celosia flower essence, and you need to have your chakras balanced, you can, it help, what it does is, this is according to um, I Am Trinity. She says, the, the sort of saying for this is, I must take responsibility for my present situation so that I can con consciously transform my life and move to my highest potential. True. We control the flame that we use and the intensity of our experiences there can be joy in every situation. So you control your flame. You can turn it up and on and off. You can control your joy, your emotions, your intensity, if you choose to do so. It also helps to balance the ego and improves your, your um, ability to kind of stand out if you need to. These definitely stand out, don't they? There's no doubt about it. You're not going to miss these. You're not going to accidentally walk by those in the garden. Now, I meant, I wanted to show you also that there are some other little local weeds that are also in the amaranth family. This is called Kenopodium. And, you know, most farmers don't like it because it is a, uh, you know, it's a weedy plant that grows in all the fields. But this is also another relative. This is also edible, can be eaten like spinach. And 
I don't know if you can tell on the on the video here, but if you look at the the stalks on them, they look very similar. Similar type of kind of striping on it, thick, uh, kind of a dense um, stalk. And you know, a lot of these plants that are in the same family are in the same family because they have a lot of similar characteristics like that. It's also known as pigweed. And again, it's an amaranth, so it puts out tons of seeds and that's why farmers don't like it. Um, so the flower essence helps you to turn up your flame. And so I really wanted to do this plant because it's growing in my garden so beautifully, but I didn't have a card for it. So I decided to pull a card from the uh, Akashic Oracle deck by Mel Shapcott. She's an artist and creates all these beautiful cards and writes all of the sayings on them as well. And the card that came up, of course, is Fires Rising. I'm like, well, that's perfect for we're talking about this um, flame plume. I think it's called plume flame or something like that. Uh, Celosia. And it says, uh, your root chakra rumbles with the intensity of a volcano on the verge of eruption. Source this power and you are unstoppable. We have a lot of power within us. And she goes on to say, courage is your guide. And what no longer serves you is quickly defeated. Oh, it serves your highest good is quickly defeated. The cleansing fires reveal your heart's true calling and you are positioned to accomplish all that you set out to do. Are you rooted in your body and are you prepared to bring your dreams to reality? So in other words, like, are you holding on to your own power? You're going to need that if you're going to want to bring your dreams to reality. So now amaranth, as we found out, it protects us from like parasites and all kinds of infections and boils and, you know, bloodshot eyes and things like that. So it really is a type of emergency medicine. And this really, to me, relates to this concept of the exploding volcano, right? So when a volcano explodes, it completely destroys the ecosystem all around it. But when the fires burn down and the ash all settles, we see that there is some brand new terrain available for, you know, colonization, right? And so the question is, how do you focus on some, when, when you've got an explosion and an eruption, how do you focus on that new terrain? How are you looking at it as potential or are you holding on to what happened and not and what you've lost basically and so this week i just finished a um a week-long program called soothing the senses where we talked about the importance of creating a calm environment for your nervous system health and for your overall health because a low stress environment gives your terrain and by terrain i mean like your your body and your yourself right it gives your terrain a like a healthy soil so that when invaders come along, germs or parasites or whatever it might be, as well as negative words or unkind deeds, things like that, you have a healthy soil that can is not going to let those things take hold. It's really about, you know, keeping yourself healthy. So having this low stress environment is very, very important. And so, again, how would you look at something that happened in your life? This is what we talked about all last week. Uh, this disaster, is it a potential for a beautiful field of flowers? Or is it, again, like a complete wasteland? You know, are you, you know how are you going to look at things like this? So the card is saying that if we stay grounded and really focus on us as humans, we have a lot of personal power if we keep it in for ourselves. But so many of us just like let it fly away, give it to other people, use it up on like negative emotions. That's a big one. Uh, mean word. We do a lot of these things that use up a lot of our energy and a lot of our power. So keep that in. 
keep yourself strong and solid, you will have enough energy. You'll have enough flame to burn, right? And keep you going throughout whatever may come your way, be it a volcano or a flood or a whatever, earthquake, whatever might be happening around you, you're grounded. You've got good terrain. You know, you'll make it through. So what better way than to create a beautiful terrain by soothing your senses with a beautiful bouquet of flowers, some music, and all the things that make our life as humans so much nicer, art and music. That's what you need to keep your flame strong and your body grounded. So thank you so much for joining me here for another Flower Power. If you are watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe to this video. That just helps a lot more people be able to see the video in their feeds. So have a great night, everybody, and I will see you all uh, next week for another Flower Power Live. Take care.